Hey bookworms, it's Jade from Bedtime Bookworm and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with my January vlog style reading wrap up. In case this is the first vlog style wrap up of mine that you're seeing, which I know is the case for a lot of you, not only because I haven't posted a vlog style wrap up in a couple months, but also because there are a whole lot of new faces around here since the beginning of January. So welcome to all of you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing. I hope you like what you see. So what I'm calling vlog style wrap ups is kind of like a mix between a reading vlog and regular wrap-ups. A regular wrap-up, you sit down at the end of the month and you go over all the books that you read. While I still do those sometimes, when I can, I like to do them more vlog style where once I finish a book, I sit down and fill my thoughts about the book not too long after reading it so that it's still pretty fresh in my mind. A lot of times this leads to me being a little more chatty and less formal than I would be in a typical wrap up. Because of that, these videos can get a little bit long, but I always have timestamps in the description box for each book that I discuss so that you can jump to specific books if you're only interested in some of them. Before we jump into the clips that I took throughout the month, I like to do like a quick overview of how my reading went. So in the month of January, I read from four books, but I only finished three because I DNF'd or did not finish one of them. As far as ratings go, I did have one two-star book, but I also had three five-star books, so I had an amazing start to the year. Out of the books that I read, three of them were parts of series. Two were actually series enders, so yay, I already finished two series this month, and one was the middle book in a trilogy, so at least I made progress in that series. If you don't know, I talked about it in my 2019 goals video, but one of my goals for the year is to continue to work on completing series that I've already started. So the four books that I talk about in this video are Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, which is the second book in the Strange the Dreamer duology, Crimson Bound by Rosamund Hodge, Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, which is the third and final book in the First Era Mistborn trilogy, and This Cruel Design by Emily Suveda, which is the second book in the Mortal Coil series. Like I said, I have timestamps in the description box so you can jump to whichever books you're interested in hearing about. If you've read any of these books, be sure to leave your thoughts about them down in the comment section. All right, if you wanna hear my thoughts on these books, then stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Jade. So it is mid-December and I haven't filmed any like vlog style wrap-up clips. So it's time that I did one of these. So far this month, I have finished a book and gave it five stars and loved it so much and I can't wait to tell you about it. And then I DNF'd a book and rated it two stars. So that's how the beginning of 2019 is going for me. So the first book that I finished this month was Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor, which is the second and final book in the Strange the Dreamer duology. I read this book in all three formats. I do own a physical copy of it. It's actually, let me get it. I actually pre-ordered this beautiful UK version with the stained pages. So even though I have a physical copy of this book, this book is almost too pretty to read out of. I did read out of it mostly just the last quarter or so. I really wanted to like have it in my hands and turn the pages. But most of the book I was reading on ebook and audiobook. I got the ebook from the library, but I really wanted to listen to the audiobook, but I also really didn't want to spend an audible credit on it, and I couldn't get it from my library. So I actually signed up for Scribd, which is a subscription service. I'm still in my free trial, but I think I'm gonna keep it. Scribd is this subscription service where you get access to a lot of audiobooks and ebooks. I think even like magazines. Oh, and even sheet music, at least for the piano. I can't verify that there are other instruments on there, but I had never heard that Scribd gives you access to sheet music. And I, I'm not very good at the piano, but I'm, it's like actually one of my personal goals that I realized I didn't talk about in my goals video. I'm gonna put this down. I, I'm not used to holding a book and my hands are sweaty and it's like gonna mess up my cover. So I signed up for Scribd because I wanted to listen to Music of Nightmares and I saw that they had it and I've enjoyed my experience so far, but I've only used it to read a couple books. Music of Nightmares was also a buddy read for me. I read it with my friend Sashana. I pre-ordered Music of Nightmares. It came early October and it's just been sitting on my shelves. And so Shoshana and I were like, okay, we need to read this book. Let's read it together. 
and we did and I am so glad that we buddy read this because this was a really good book to buddy read. Something that she and I tried for the first time and was amazing and I'm gonna do this more often is we both had the audiobook and so we would be like okay we're gonna push play on chapter whatever at the top of the hour and we would be listening at the same speed at the same time and like live texting each other and it was such a fun way to buddy read something so I definitely recommend you guys try that out sometime it was so fun obviously we couldn't do that for every single reading session but we did it multiple times towards the end of the book when things were really intense and things were all over the place and it was so fun and really added to my enjoyment I think one complaint a lot of people have about the first book in the duology strange the dreamer is that it's like really slow and not a lot happens and there may be like the first quarter of Muse of Nightmares, I could see someone saying that, but man, this book had way more action and so much stuff going on compared to the first book. One thing that I just like could not stop talking about with Sashana is that Lady Taylor really plays with your heart. It was such a roller coaster. I would be feeling really excited and things are looking really optimistic and then all of a sudden things would be looking terrible and like the world was ending and then things would be good and then things would be bad and it was just like all over the place. Like it was crazy but so good. Not only is Lainey Taylor's writing amazing in this book and every other book, she just has like a really lyrical way of writing that I absolutely love, but she also explores some really deep themes. The book is not just the plot. It, it has a lot more to it. It makes you think about a lot of things and this book is a lot about war, seeing war from both sides and how nobody's really innocent and how like everyone is just a result of their circumstances and it doesn't make them evil even if they do bad things and you just you feel so deeply for people on both sides of the conflict and it just really makes you think and she had a few quotes about like war and hate and things that I highlighted on my kindle even though I don't usually collect quotes or anything they were just such like nuggets of wisdom and I love them. As far as the romance in this book, I mean, I already shipped the, the romance from the first book. It continues in this book, so if you didn't like it before, you're probably not gonna like it now. But I just think that Lainey Taylor writes romance really well. Like yes, her characters tend to get together quickly or fall for each other quickly, but the way that she writes about the emotions that they feel makes my heart flutter and gives me butterflies. Just the way that her writing is, I feel the emotions that her characters are feeling. So even though it, it happens quickly, I find it still to be convincing because she's making me feel the same feelings that the characters are feeling. I said feelings a lot, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> And on top of all of that, I think Lainey Taylor is just insanely creative. The Strange Their Dreamer duology is nothing like anything that I've read before. She just comes up with these mythologies and worlds that are so interesting and different and unique. And the way this book ended just sort of blew my mind and I cannot wait for her to come out with more books. When I was reading Strange the Dreamer, I thought that maybe this duology was taking place in the same universe as her Daughter of Smoke and Bone series because that book is in a multiverse type of universe and so I thought that this might be in the same universe but it wasn't really clear until this book, at least to me, that this duology is definitely set in the same multiverse and at the end she hints at ties between this series and the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series. You absolutely do not need to read Daughter of Smoke and Bone to understand anything in the Strange the Dreamer duology but if you have read it then some of the things she says at the end of the book you know sort of what she's talking about and what she's hinting at and it just got me so excited like unbelievably excited to see more worlds and hints that maybe in the future the strange the dreamer and daughter smoke and bone characters might collide at some point like that would be so cool. So I want to give some content warnings for this book because I don't think I really hear people giving a lot of content warnings for this duology. I mean, it's not super graphic, but like I said, there's a lot of war or talk of war in this book or in the duology. So I would want to give a content warning for that and for rape, not necessarily on page rape, but definitely implied rape and people dealing with the repercussions of rape. And also I want to give a content warning for suicide. It's not like super graphic or anything like that, but it is something that happens in the book. 
and I don't think it's something a lot of people talk about and so I just want to put that out there. Okay I think those are all of the like non-spoilery things that I can say about my thoughts on Muse of Nightmares. I think you can tell that I absolutely loved it and like I said I gave it five stars and it was so great to start my year with a book that I loved so much and I can see this being a favorite for a very long time. Okay let's move on to the next book. The next book that I read, or maybe I should say attempted to read, was, I actually have a copy of it, Crimson Bound by Rosamond Hodge, who also wrote Cruel Beauty, which I have not read. This is an ARC, and I won this in a giveaway probably two or three years ago. Okay, I'm gonna put it down now. Well, I did have this ARC copy, or advanced reader copy. I also got the ebook an audiobook from my library and I actually also got the audiobook from Scribd because they have a 1.8 times option for speed and Libby does not. So I was actually listening to it on Scribd even though I had the audiobook from my library. Crimson Bound was actually a TBR jar pick. It had been in my TBR jar probably since like 2016 and I was excited about reading it because I'd heard good things about Cruel Beauty. But also this was a Little Red Riding Hood retelling and I haven't read any Little Red Riding Hood retelling so I thought it was a unique and interesting idea. So this book was quite the journey for me. So the first time I tried to read this, you heard me right, the first time I tried to read it this month, I was mostly just listening to it on audio and I got 41% through it and I realized like, I don't really know what's going on. The narrator was good. I thought she was doing a good job, but for some reason I just didn't have a good grasp on the story. I couldn't picture what the scenes looked like, like where we were. And I just had really completely lost track of what was going on at that point. So I was like, okay, well, maybe this is my fault. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention while listening to the audiobook. Sometimes that happens. But the other thing that was happening during this time was that my ebook for Hero of Ages had become available from my library. And I was super excited to read that. I was buddy reading that with Leanna from Leanna's library. And I told her that when it came in, I was gonna let her know so we could start buddy reading it. But I hadn't like told her that it had come in because I was trying to finish reading Crimson Bound. And I just, I couldn't focus on Crimson Bound. And I thought it was because I was just so distracted by Hero of Ages. So I decided to pause it and start Hero of Ages. And then I finished Muse of Nightmares, making room to start another book while I was reading Hero of Ages. So I went back to Crimson Bound and I knew that I had no idea what was going on. So I actually started over. I started from page one and I did try to do more physical reading because I thought maybe I just needed to be a little more grounded and just like actually physically be reading it for the story to stick better. Well, I still got 41% through the story and while I had a much better idea of what was going on, I did not care what was going on. I just, I couldn't bring myself to care about the characters and the plot and I just had to give up on it. I think one of my issues with this book was that the world building was lacking. While I did learn some things about the world, I felt like what I knew about the world was very limited to what the main character was seeing and doing. Like I didn't really have a good grasp of what was outside of her immediate surroundings. I feel like the transitions weren't that great at explaining where we were coming from or going. And at times she would just like pop up in a different location and I'd be like, where are we? Like, how did we get here? What just happened? And I was honestly like really confused through a lot of the book, even when I was physically reading it for the second time. Another thing is that while I didn't find it super info dumpy, like I wasn't getting a lot of information at once, it was definitely spread out, but it was a lot more telling than showing. Like she would be talking about something and if she introduced a new concept, she would explain right then how that fit into the story. And some of those explanations just seemed really convenient. <laughs> I didn't like any of the characters. The main character, Rochelle, seemed to be one of those main characters who's just like good at everything. And even though there was sort of a reason for her to have all of the skills that she did, I just, I don't know, I had a hard time buying into it. And I felt like the plot was kind of dragging and I just didn't care about any of the characters. Basically, there were all of these little red flags that while the first time I was reading it, when I was listening, I didn't necessarily pick up on all of them, but I wasn't able to really immerse myself in the story and to really grasp a hold of it. 
And then the second time, all of these red flags became very apparent. And by the time I got to 41%, I knew that I wasn't going to give this book more than a three star. And at this point, it was frustrating me and annoying me enough that I wanted to give it two stars. So I DNF'd it at 41% and I gave it two stars on Goodreads. I went through and looked at some of the other Goodreads ratings and I definitely think I'm a little bit on the unpopular opinion side. There were a lot more positive reviews of this book than negative, even from like people that I know and follow on Goodreads. But when I went and read some of the other two star reviews, they kind of voiced some of the feelings that I was having. So it's good to know that I'm not crazy. I mean, you should never think you're crazy for feeling whatever way you feel about a book, but it's always nice to have that sort of validation when you look at other reviews. So I know I'm not the only one out there that felt this way, although it does seem I'm in the minority. So while I really wanted to like this book, I thought the idea of a Little Red Riding Hood retelling sounded so good. It just, the execution and the plot and the characters just didn't work for me. So like I said, I do have this arc of the book. If you're not familiar with arcs, you, you can't sell them. I know I just said a bunch of negative things about it, but those are just, you know, my feelings. And you can always go onto Goodreads and see what your friend said about it and see if you think you're gonna like it. But if you think you might want this book, just say in a comment that you're interested in getting this book and leave a way for me to get a hold of you, either through Twitter or Instagram are usually the, the two ways that I direct message people. And if there's more than one person who's interested in this, then I'll do like a comment picker and randomly choose between the people who are interested. I just, I can't sell this and I would rather just give it to somebody who is actually interested in it. Unfortunately, this is gonna be US only just because this is a book that I physically have and international shipping is really expensive. And I'm really sorry about that. Sometimes I do do international giveaways, but usually that's when I'm just like ordering a book from Book Depository or somewhere that ships internationally. So yeah, let me know if any of you guys are interested in this. If nobody's interested in it, I'll figure out something else to do. <laughs> Anyways, those are my thoughts on the first two books that I finished this month. I am almost done with my third book, which you probably have guessed is Hero of Ages, and I am really excited to tell you my thoughts on it when I'm finally done. All right, I will check in with you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, it's Jade. So I finished another book this week. It is coming close to the end of the month and I've only finished two books at this point because I DNF'd one that I read half of twice which is frustrating but I do have the 24 and 48 readathon coming up this weekend so hopefully that's gonna help me get some more books read this month. I mean I don't know why I said hopefully like that's definitely gonna help me get more books read but anyways the book that I finished was The Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson, the last and final book in the first era Mistborn trilogy. After finishing the second book in December, I was really excited to continue the series and I put a hold on the audiobook at my library like right away and it finally came through. Like I read this book in ebook and audiobook formats, both of which I got from my library. I actually put off like the last 10% of the book for a day or two because I wanted to sit down and finish it all at once But I didn't feel like I had any big chunks of reading time that I would be able to do that And I actually got a little frustrated because the audiobook that I had got from my library Was about to be returned and so I downloaded it onto my old phone And I put my old phone on airplane mode and it worked for like a week I was still able to listen to it even though technically it was past the due date, but then the last day, like literally the day that I was gonna listen to the last 10% of the book, I opened my phone and it was deleted. It was still on airplane mode, so I don't know how that happened. But anyways, I ended up having to just read the last 10% on ebook, which is totally fine, but I was looking forward to finishing it on audiobook and was really bummed when I couldn't. I really loved the new like world building stuff that we learned in this book. And on top of that, Brandon Sanderson was able to raise the stakes in each book in such a believable and like, interesting way and the ending of this book absolutely gutted me. I don't know how but the last two books in the trilogy did not make me cry. I was sad, I teared up a little bit but I didn't cry but this one boy did it make me cry. I cried like on and off through the last 30 minutes of reading it and then even after I finished it I cried on, on and off for like another 30 minutes but I was just so sad after finishing it. I mean the ending is sad but also is not sad like 
it, it's a bittersweet ending, which is how I like my trilogies to end. I want there to be some good things, but also it's good if there are some devastating things. <laughs> this one definitely devastated me a little bit. I thought I was prepared for the ending. Like I've heard lots of people say that the ending was devastating and emotional and things like that. So I tried to like ready my heart for it, but <laughs> my heart was not ready. Luckily, I have a lot of friends who have read this book. I was sort of buddy reading this with Leanna from Leanna's library. She finished it way before I did, but I was messaging her and telling her all my feelings. I also was messaging Elliot Brooks because this is one of her favorite books, and I also talked to Murphy Napier about it. So I had lots of people to vent and get my emotions out to, which was really good. I don't really know what other like non-spoilery things I can say. Actually, one more thing that I do want to mention. I do want to mention that this last book and a little bit of the second book has a lot more religious themes in it. It didn't bother me in the second book, but the ending of this book, I don't know, was a lot more religious than I was expecting. I'll link Leanna's video about it because she goes more in depth into how she felt, but it was something that I noticed and it did make me a little bit uncomfortable, but not enough to really take too much of my enjoyment away but I was also doing some soul searching to kind of figure out like why would religion and the way it's presented in this book bother me more than other fantasy books like I read other fantasy books that have religion in them like the Wheel of Time books which are like my favorite there's a prophecy and you know there is a force of good and a force of evil and like religion in that book never bothered me but in this book for some reason it kind of did and I'm still kind of sorting through those feelings but I just want to put that out there that it is something that I noticed. I thought the religious messages were a little heavy-handed. Maybe I was over interpreting them. I know that it kind of ties into the wider Cosmere somehow and I'm still not super familiar with the Cosmere. So in the end I gave this five out of five stars. I mean it just emotionally hit me so hard and over the last three books I have grown so attached to all of these characters. I love them so much and in this book I actually gained a new favorite character or like one of my favorites. I, I couldn't pick a favorite out of all of these characters that I've met in the series because they're just all too dear to me. So yeah I gave it five stars. If I was doing half stars it might be a four and a half just because of those religious things that I noticed that bothered me a little bit, but I still really like the book, but definitely rounds up to five stars, a new favorite book of the year. And I'm really looking forward to reading more Brandon Sanderson in the future. All right, I will check in with you guys when I finish another book, hopefully this weekend during the 24 in 48 readathon. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. Hey guys, it's Jade. So it's time to talk to you about the last book that I finished in the month of January, and that was This Cruel Design by Emily Suveda, which I've been pronouncing Suvada, and apparently it's Suveda, at least according to the audiobook narrator. I read the entirety of this book during the 24 in 48 hour readathon that happened in January, and I did vlog that weekend, so if you want to check that out, I will link it for you up above and down below. I had this book out from the library in hardcover, but I honestly only ever opened the hardcover to see what page I was on to like track how far into the book I was because I mostly listened to this book on audiobook, which I was not able to get from my library and instead I was able to access through Scribd, which is a subscription service I already mentioned earlier in this video. As you may or may not have seen in my reading vlog where I talked about this book, I absolutely loved it. It was so much fun and I gave it five out of five stars. This is a sequel, so I won't say anything too specific about the plot, but this series is a, oh, no, not Siri. In my realm, anyone can be anything. <laughs> That's pretty good. So this book and series is a YA sci-fi thriller. I would call it a thriller because it's really action-packed and full of plot twists, which is one of my favorite things about this series. It takes place in a post-apocalyptic world where this virus has killed off a lot of the population. And the virus itself is super unique and so different from anything that I've read before. And I would kind of describe it as almost like a reverse zombie virus. And it's one of my favorite parts of like the world building in this series. So in addition to having this crazy virus that has killed so many people, this is also futuristic. And people in this world have control panels or C panels embedded into their arms and they're able to use 
coding technology to change their DNA, to not only change the way that they look, but also to control like their eyes and how they process visual data and all kinds of really creative, cool stuff. At least cool to me. So like I said, this book and this series is very fast paced, full of action, lots and lots of plot twists. I said this about the first book, but it applies to this one as well. I constantly felt like the rug was being pulled out from under me. I never knew what to expect. The plot kept changing directions. I was suspicious of everybody that I met. And of course, I love all of the genetic stuff. If you don't know, I have a background in genetics and I love to see and read genetics in books, but I'm also often very cautious about it or wary because a lot of times books don't do it well enough to pull it off for me. Like I'm not able to suspend my disbelief enough if the genetics is really wrong, you know? But I don't have that problem at all with the series, which is another thing that I love about it. Emily Suveda actually has a biology background and she also has like a data scientist background. So she's very well versed in the things that she's talking about and it really shows in her writing. The other thing related to genetics that I really like about these books is that Emily Suveda really explores topics that are relevant in genetics today. So a couple of things that she explored in the last book were things like nature versus nurture. How much does our DNA define who we are? And she continues to explore that within this book. Um, she also in the last book explored a bit about gene patenting and how gene patenting or any sort of like medical patenting can limit access for the average person to medicines and technologies that could really help them. In this book, she also explores the differences between germline versus somatic genetic editing, which I know that was like sciencey terms, but basically that's editing genes that can be passed on to your children versus editing genes that will really only affect your own body. And that's like a real discussion that happens in today's genetics world, whether or not it's ethical to change genes that might actually be passed on into future generations, because we don't really know what the impact of that might be. So I love that she takes these topics that are tied to the real world and explores them in this futuristic, post-apocalyptic, science fiction setting. I know I just talked a lot about how much I love the science in it, but I also feel like it's still written in a way where if you're not a very sciencey person, you can still enjoy the book and have a lot of fun with the fast paced plot and all of the plot twists that happen and things like that. I just think that both of these books in the series have been just plain fun for me to read. And I loved the sequel so much. It did not have second book syndrome for me. And I cannot wait for the last book. The title of it was just announced recently and it's titled This Vicious Cure, which sounds amazing and I love how it ties in with the titles of the other two books. It's not coming out for a while, but you can bet that I am eagerly anticipating it. I know that this cruel design is the third five star book that I've had this month. I will say compared to the other two five stars I've had, this one is probably more of a 4.5, not because I can think of anything that I didn't like to deduct points from, but just comparatively, it's doesn't quite stand up to those other two books, but I still loved it enough to round it up to five stars from four and a half. All right guys, those are all of the books that I read this month. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you like bookish content. I post one to two times a week. That is all I have for now. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, bookworms, keep reading. Bye.